Good morning. I am not at my house, as you might tell. I am at our church building in Puyallup, Washington. And today uh, there are some dedicated volunteers who have been working to make lunches for the New Hope Resource Center, which is a day drop-in center serving homeless adults in our area. Unfortunately, they've had to close their doors and are only able to serve meals to folks via takeaway because of all of the concerns with the coronavirus spreading. So our volunteers are considered essential by the state, thank you very much, and they're making lunch and I'm the one who delivers lunches. So I thought it would be a good chance for me to show you our building and maybe pray in a different place. So let me put in my code and get in the building. It's hard to think that while we are sheltering in place in our homes and can choose whether we go outside when the sun is shining or we um, stay inside when it's cold, that some folks don't have that opportunity. And it's sad for our community because we don't have a homeless shelter in the Puyallup area and folks are are resorting to staying in tents near the river because there are no other alternatives for them. So this is my office. We'll get in here and you can see how messy my office is. So, thank you for joining me for morning prayers. Give me just a second to set up. Oh, I probably need my book of Psalms. We're reading from the Psalms for our morning devotions, and my favorite translation of the Psalms is by Robert Alter, the Book of Psalms, a translation with commentary, and so we'll be reading from that. I like it so much I have a copy at home and a copy in my office, so uh, just a shout out to what a wonderful translation and work he does bringing the Psalms to life in a beautiful and very poetic way. Ah. Thanks for joining me today for morning prayer. Thanks for joining me in my office rather than meeting me in at my home. Stoney's not here, so we won't be interrupted by Stoney. But I'm glad you're here. So I invite you to take a moment Take a breath, make sure that you're creating not only a sacred place, but a sacred time for yourself. So set aside any other things that you might have had on your plate and just give yourself a couple of moments to rest in the presence of God and know that God's loving arms shelter you in this moment and indeed in every moment. We'll continue our prayers um, using J. Philip Newell's book, Celtic Prayers from Iona, with the prayers for Thursday. We begin with a reading from Psalm 139, verses 9 through 10. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the furthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. Take a moment and be still and be aware of God's presence around you and within you. O oh, loving Christ who died upon the tree, each day and each night I remember your love. In my lying down and in my rising up, in life and in death, you are my health and my peace. Each day and each night I remember your forgiveness bestowed on me so gently and generously. Each day and each night, may I be fuller in love to you. Our 
our psalm for the day is Psalm 121, a favorite. If the mountain was out, I would have um, given you a glimpse of the mountain this morning, but our mountain, Mount Rainier, is hiding from us today. Psalm 121, which is a song of ascent. I lift up my eyes to the mountains from where will my help come? My help is from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He does not let your foot stumble. Your guard does not slumber. Look, he does not slumber, nor does he sleep, Israel's guard. The Lord is your guard. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. By day the sun does not strike you, nor the moon by night. The Lord guards you from all harm. He guards your life. The Lord guards your going and your coming, now and forevermore. I chose for this morning a poem by Anne Sexton entitled, Welcome Morning. There is joy in all, in the hair I brush each morning, in the cannon towel newly washed that I rub my body with each morning, in the chapel of eggs I cook each morning. In the outcry from the kettle that heats my coffee each morning. In the spoon and the chair that cry, hello there, Anne, each morning. In the godhead of the table that I set my silver plate cup upon each morning. All this is God, right here in my pea green house each morning. And I mean, though often forget, to give thanks, to faint down by the kitchen table in a prayer of rejoicing, as the holy birds at the kitchen window peck into their marriage of seeds. So, while I think of it, let me paint a thank you on my palm for this God, this laughter of the morning, lest it go unspoken. The joy that isn't shared, I've heard, dies young. And that again is Welcome Morning by Ann Sexton. I invite you to reflect on our psalm reading and on the poem and on the one, the Holy One, who calls us to follow him as the way, the truth, and the life. Let us pray. Life be in my speech, truth in what I say. The love Christ Jesus gave be filling every heart for me. The love Christ Jesus gave be filling me for everyone. Together, let's pray for the coming day and pray that we might follow Christ more closely. Closing prayer of blessing. Bless to me, O God, the earth beneath my feet. Bless to me, O God, the path on which I go. Bless to me, O God, the people whom I meet. O God of all gods, bless to me my life. Amen. Thanks again for joining me for morning prayer, this time in my office. I invite you to remember the folks who will be receiving lunches today at our local New Hope Resource Center, lunches that are so lovingly prepared for them this morning. 
And I invite you, if you are able to support that ministry in some way, you can contact us in our messages. Or if you are coming in and listening from far away, I invite you to look in your own communities and seek out those who are helping the least of those among you and see how you can help too. Today and always be well, be kind, and always be the church where you are.